yourself and tell us um, what grade level you're in, what school you represent, and um, give us your goal for your Iowa College tournament or Valley tournament or Des Moines tournament. Um, hi, I'm Nairobi Woolies. Um, Nairobi Willis Barnes. I'm a senior from Oakland. I go to Oakland Military Institute. And I guess my goal is to really just improve my time, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super important. I'm gonna be honest, a lot of a lot of people, I'm I'm gonna be so truthful. I wasn't I don't think I was the best debater, but I did do well because of my preparation. Like I didn't mind, I didn't have a problem cutting a book on my own. I didn't mind creating front lines on my own. I don't think, I didn't, a coach didn't write a 180 for me after my novice year. Like I just, I just took that much control, at least as much of my content as I could. Um, and I think that um, even if you can't, I mean, of course you can control your content because you have help, you want cards. Of course you have the card curtain card, you have, you know, there'll be supplements provided throughout the year. Um, so of course, and of course you have the opportunity to, you know, um, ask me if I can, you know, get files from any of the people that I know. So um, just as an, another um, reminder, but yeah, um, that's good to know. That's good to know. Amy, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, of course, uh, my name is Amy Gorell. I am a volunteer with Bottle. And I'm currently uh, serving as the debate coach for Oakland Technical High School. Okay, great, 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 great. And um, yeah, um, so I am the uh, program manager, which means I basically help with the open division and help assisting with um, some of the high schools, just make sure that they have support from the league, that people know about the announcements and the activities that we have also trying to, you know, do some fundraising and you know, make sure that people know who we are and what we're about. And so for the students, of course, you probably should already know what we're about. But I guess today, just to give you some insight, we'll be having practices every Thursday, four to six via Zoom. Um, I don't know if we'll start doing hybrid stuff more and more. Um, there may be some question, some chance and opportunity for that. Um, and then the other thing um, is that there's a tournament um, the 16th of next month. I, if you don't have the, um, the, the schedule for that and you're watching, uh, watching this video, um, you can reach out to us. Um, just go to the BAUDL website or get in contact with your coach or you know, person who's visiting at your site maybe myself, or maybe Willie, or maybe Sakai. Um, and then any other announcements? Oh, um, there's an expo coming up with the NAUDL um, for our colleges for you to get some insight on some um, college prep, um, college admissions, all the things related to getting you ready and going to be a college student. Um, we have um, a workshop on that. And then um, any other announcements can I think of? Oh yeah, um, and if you're, you know, if you decide to um, go back to the basics, of course, there's another skill-based practice on Tuesday with Sakai um, so that you can get, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to the novice practice. Sometimes I had to go to the novice practice. Sometimes the novice would intrigue me and provide me some answers I would use later on. Sometimes you just, you just never know. So it's nothing wrong with trying to get the, the help that you need um, as much as you can. So yeah, let's get started. Um, so today's the Kai, I mean, I think Kai, not Ruby. Um, I wanted to do a, but I'll do it with you because I probably should do it with you. Um, I wanted to do speaking drills, but let's first do a flowing drill. So um, how much do you, are, do you know about like, how do you flow? What, like, what is your, like, you, do you have a structure on how you flow? Um, I tend to break it up like I already uh, prepare my flow by like starting off with the main points that I put down before the debate as like the one and C only when I do the one AC but um, when I'm two and R you know I usually just flow from like you know 
start to finish. But yeah, when I'm the one I see, I already come in with like my main points written down and then, uh, you know, cross X. I also flow during those, like just questions they ask me so I can reiterate on them, you know, in later speeches or my partner can reiterate on them. Um, and yeah. Okay. I'm going to just step away from my desk for real quick. I can hear you. I'm going to talk to you. But before I step away from my desk and show you something else, I want to show you. So usually when you debate, you flow the whole round. And sometimes you would need to, for your partner, flow one speech twice. Right? And so let's say, OK, you're the 1AC, right, Nairobi? Yeah. Let's say I'm the 2AC. So. If you're the 1AC, right, you, you wouldn't, you would already have, you don't, you're the first speech. So you would just pre-flow your 1AC, right? You know what that means? Yeah, I have a plea flow. Okay. Okay. So if, like for me, I was the 1AC, I already knew what was going to be in there. I already knew the cards, the evidence, the tags, I already knew it. So I was just, that speech would already be pre-flowed, already done. And then um, the 2AC would also do that too. Now, I already know what you're going to say, Nairo, because I'm your partner, right? So what I would already do is just while you're speaking, I would just make sure that my overview was together, that I would leave maybe some lines down at the bottom for how they may respond to the 2AC in that overview. I may pull out some cards just because, honestly, if you're doing enough prep ahead of time, you can kind of tell after that 1AC cross deck what they're going to do in the one and see, right? So you can start pulling out some stuff um, in that cross deck. Maybe they might change once you hear the one and see, but at least you can have that stuff prepared and out, your cards ready, the documents pulled up, whatever you need, so that when you start to prep, you ain't doing all that during your prep time. You already have it pulled up because you're not flowing the one AC because you already know what the one AC is, right? So you are eight minutes ahead of the game, right? Or five minutes ahead of the game, depending on what type of time structure you're using right so you flow the whole debate and then you do some pre-flowing which is or pre-flowing or back flowing which is another term now i'm going to show you now most debaters most not all most debaters their flow would look a little bit like this does your flow look like this at all anything kind of like this yeah i keep it like broken up like that where it's like when i see line down then you know, cross sex, like I make uh, okay. sections of the cross sex. I don't know, it's kind of weird how I do it with the cross sex, but yeah. I'm, I mean, it shouldn't be that that weird. It should be literally like, here you have, I do, I use, I usually do black. Well, technically I use red for negative, but in this instance, I use black for affirmative, blue for negative, right? And then I think, yeah, but, but I don't know, depending on which flow this is, I don't know if this is on page for some next track. I think this is no, this is next track. So blue is actually affirmative, black was actually neg. So this is neg, affirmative, neg, affirmative, the neg, which is probably like the two and C one and R, right? So that's one straight down and then two and C one and R, right? And then what's next? Two AR? Two and R. I have the whole flow of this the when the negative started the one and C to the two AR on this one paper. And probably if I read it right now, I could probably learn to some of these debates, right? That's what you wanna make sure that you have on your flow, make sure that at least you understand it, make sure you understand where those components are. And you wanna make sure that even though that you're abbreviating and those types of things, that, um, that it's making sense, right? And that, and sometimes, and another thing that's also complicated too, I know that a lot of people aren't, you know, around, you know, even when you're sitting next to your partner or, you know, we're via computers right now, it may be hard to use your debate partner's flow, but you want to make sure that you, if that there's some general sense for you to be able to understand it later and also for your coach to be able to understand it, your partner be able to understand it, because we need to have some record of what happened in the debate round, right? So we can be able to be prepared. You know, if you lose, we want to be able to not lose again, right? So that's just some tidbit about flowing but um yeah so we'll talk some more stuff about flowing before i 
um, continue to do that, I want to show some other things. One second. So the other thing about flowing, um, you again, two types of colors. So you use one color for app, one color for a negative. That's the general rule. Abbrevi abbreviation using symbols and using a pen. Taco style. Um, you don't have to do taco style. I'm not a person who's a fan of taco style. I've learned over the years. I'm a. I write big handed. I have college ruled handwriting. I write like a female. Everybody says it, but just because I've I've debated for so long. I can do it on the eight by eleven. It's fine for me. Like, <laughs> even if you spread me eight, it doesn't matter. I'm fine. <laughs> like, you know, that's just how I am. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Um, do you have this? Um, have you? I know we haven't met each other. We've only done Zoom. What I want to do is I'm gonna send you this, which um, I always pick up even, I didn't even know people use the exclamation mark, mark for impact until with college debate. Like I, I've always used, I don't know what I ever used for impact. I use, I think I use MPX. I think so, that's what I use. Um, I don't know what else I would use. Oh, I was using the circle with the two lines for like death war. The circle with the two lines, that's what I was using. But yeah, there's, um, there's some like debate kind of things that have gone on that have trended that have been like normal practices on flowing, um, but there's some, also some generic ones that are just in vocabulary. Of course, if you hear the word education, you just abbreviate it to EU, government, GOV. But yeah, there's this little thing here that shows you as an example of like different symbols that can be used. I can send you this glossary so you can have it. Maybe you might find something that you may like and you may pick it up and start using it in your flow because that's how I learned to flow. I don't know if I've ever, I think maybe I kind of used this handbook since like high school debate. Maybe it was a different handbook, but I, I don't know. I think this is one of the, the most favorite ones that I've used over the years. Um, and it also shows you like, like I do that, see like, you see you have my flow, I have the lines going so I can flow, you know, I have stuff circled, which is kind of like what they're doing here. So you can know what arguments are best to, respond to what you know so yeah that's um i want that's kind of what i want to go over in terms of flowing but before we do well yeah let's do a flowing exercise let's start there are you do you have a pen ready nairobi yeah okay um so let's do a flowing exercise get you um about three or four sheets of paper i'm gonna get a deck of cards and this is a game that my debate coach used to play and so, yeah, let's, let me get my deck of cards. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm a little hood. I don't have hardly any cups in my apartment because I'm just moving from Baltimore to QC. <laughs> and the cup I do have right next to me is like coffee. Okay. Like, are we debating or are we at a gambling table via Zoom? <laughs> All right, so let me see if I can All right, so let's get three sheets of paper and now let's make it four. Let's do one, will be the, of course, the one AC, one will be counter plan, one will be this ed. I don't know, it doesn't matter what kind of just said. Um, um, and then the fourth piece of paper will be, I don't know, another just said. <laughs> so, um, so there's a, a sheet of paper for, uh, when I say app case, kind of plan, just said, just said. Or you can do the last one, critique, it doesn't matter. You can call it what you want. You can call it this said number two or critique. Okay. Are you ready to start flowing? <laughs> yep. So the first argument is three of hearts. Second argument is two of hearts. Third argument is seven of hearts. Fifth argument is king of hearts. 
dang, I need to shuffle these cards. Um, sixth argument, one, two, three, four, five. No, fifth argument is six of spades. Seventh argument is two of clubs. Eight, eight of clubs is the next card. Jack of hearts is the last argument for the one AC. All right. Next piece of paper, three of diamonds, two of spades, ace of hearts, king of diamonds for the dissad. Next dissad, 10 of spades, two of spades, ace of spades, joker, big joker. Counter plan, queen of hearts, eight of Heart, four of spades, king of spades, eight of spades, jack of spades, 10 of, wait, no. Jack of diamonds, excuse me, 10 of diamonds, queen of spades, five of spades, nine of diamonds, and three of clubs. <laughs> now I got to get my little thing right. All right. So, hold on. Let me get my, I feel like I'm in the tab room right now, back in the old school. One second. <laughs> One second. I need to get my flow paper together. So, look at what you have on your flow. Okay, this is the one you see. This is the name. Okay. And I've kept everything on the line by line. Everything's in order. I have not switched the order. So, are we ready for the two AC? Yeah. Okay. The Jack of Hearts is going on the nine of spades. The Ace of Clubs is going to three of diamonds. The Two of Clubs will go on the King of diamonds onto the next flow. The jack of hearts will answer the 10 of spades. The ace of clubs will also answer the 10 of spades. Oh, I should probably, I should have probably flowed this myself. <laughs> you, but you got it, Amy, right? Uh, I you didn't give uh, tell me what page the first one was on, so oh, I didn't. All right, that was on the this day. I'm sorry. I'll let you. I'll correct that. I messed that up. Should we start over? Yeah, for at least that second speech, because I didn't know what flow, what paper to put it on. So I was like scrambling, trying to find and figure out where the like 10 of spades was. I got you. I got you. So let me, let me do this too. I probably should have been recording as well. Hold on one second. Uh. Are we totally starting over or? Yeah, yeah, let me get it down real quick. Um, so uh, I just want to make sure I have it correct. The, the first just said is three of diamonds, nine of spades, mm -hmm. ace of hearts. Yep. King of diamonds. Yep. Then 10 of spades on the next sheet. Yep. Two of spades on the next sheet. Mm -hmm. Ace of spades on the next sheet. And then Joker. Yeah. That's the, the what big Joker? Yeah. Okay. And that was that was the other disad. Right. So those were two disads. Right. Um, and then the what I say the oh then it was the uh the 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 counter plan right? Yep. Okay. Um, the queen of clubs, right? I had the queen of hearts. 
Okay, I, I, I clean the clubs, change that. Clean clubs. My bad. Uh, queen of clubs, eight of hearts, mm -hmm. four of spades, king of spades, mm -hmm. eight of spades, jack diamond, ten mm -hmm. diamond, queen of spades, five of spades, nine of diamond, three clubs. Yep. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Did you get that, Nairobi? I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's just. You want to start? Let's everybody. You want everybody to start all over? Let's. You want to start all over, everybody? It's okay. I'm. I got everything so far, but it's up to you. Do you want to start all over, Nairobi? Uh, sure. Okay. No, we can't. Do you understand what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's just start all over because I think I should probably start all over too and just record um, the flow with you all. I think that'll be better just to make sure I'm moderating this activity correctly. <laughs> um, on, yeah, I would just say make sure you give like a roadmap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start so I know what we know what paper to be flown on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I was never a good roadmap person too, but you know, this is why it's good. For you to know how to not make those mistakes, right? And road mapping is important because you want to cater to your judge. You want to make sure that you are giving your judge as much because look at what's happening right now, right? Nairobi, like, see how Amy, if Amy was a judge right now and I had given her the wrong information and she's pulling for evidence at the round or looking back over evidence, I may have screwed myself up, you know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. Let's start from the top, tip of the top. Okay, so let's start with the 1AC. <laughs> All right. For regular or um, disad kind of plan? No, no, we're just gonna start all over, new round. Yeah, blank sheets of paper. We're starting totally over and this is gonna be the plan. I'm sorry, California environment. Make sure you recycle those sheets or just scratch it out or something. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to be ethical as much because you need to talk to you. Making me more mindful. Okay. So when I see y'all ready. Uh, just one sec. No problem. Okay. Also, my partner says she's joining in like 15 minutes. Okay. All right. No problem. No problem. We we'll probably um, do this a few times just to make sure, you know, we can get a whole round. All right. So let me show you these cards again because I kept getting the same like type of cards. I had like shuffled it a few times before I got a line. So I don't know what for. I had the luck of the Irish, but I don't. <laughs> Okay, so you starting? You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Nine of spades, three of diamonds, three of hearts, three of clubs, five of diamonds, eight of eights of clubs, two of spades, jack of hearts, big joker, ten of spades. Ace of spades, jack of clubs. One last time for the affirmative. Nine of spades, three of diamonds, three of hearts, three of clubs, five of diamonds, ace of clubs, two of spades, jack of hearts, big joker, 10 of spades, ace of spades, jack of clubs. Take out three. Yeah. No, 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 wait. Yes, three sheets of paper. Um, so we can fit myself.
Okay. So, um, the first piece of paper will be topicality. The second piece of paper will be a disad. The third piece of paper will be a counter plan. And then we'll go back to K. Which will be the 180, of course. You ready? Topicality. A, I mean, ace of hearts, <laughs> king of hearts, nine of diamonds, six of spades, eight of clubs, two of clubs. Next piece of paper, this ad, jack of spades. Little Joker, seven of diamonds, eight of diamonds, four of hearts. Counter plan, 10 of diamonds, king of clubs, six of clubs, five of spades, four of spades. On to Anke, eight of hearts, seven of spades, nine of hearts. All right, let me slow this real quick. <laughs> All right, and we'll probably get started with the two AC. So the two AC will be in the same order of the negative. So get that prepared. Sorry, what, what's the order? The same as the one C. I don't know. I'll 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 provide it to you if you don't remember it. One second. Okay. Um, the order is, of course, the one AC. T, counter plan, um, and then the disad. On to T, I mean, on to K. 10 of spades. No, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, 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 wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, you can keep that. 10 of spades, seven of hearts, king of spades, six of diamonds, extend, three of clubs, jack of hearts, big joker, the 10 of spades. Cross apply, uh, go to T, cross apply the big joker, the three of diamonds, king of diamonds, jack of diamonds. On to counter plan. King of spades, 10 of spades, four clubs, 10 hearts, 
queen heart, ace diamond. On the last flow, dick bag, big joker, ace of spades, ace of clubs, 10 of spades, Eight of clubs, no, eight of, I'm sorry, eight of spades. And five of hearts. Did everybody got that so far? Cool. I'm trying to keep up with myself here. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to the negative block. Let me prepare for my negative block real quick with each deck of cards. There it is. Uh huh. And there we go. Okay. Let me make sure that that looks like a ten. See why I'm writing stuff down, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So um, in this speech, I'll be covering the counter plan. In the D set, Compton, this set, ah, uh, that's my little D T too. One second, let me make sure I got this correct. Okay. On the okay, I said counter plan. Right? On the counter plan. Um, answer their um, king of spade with the king of clubs. Answer their six of clubs. I mean, answer their four of clubs with the six of clubs. And answer their ace of, of diamond with the six of clubs. Um, four of spades. I'm sorry, um, extend the four of spades. Um, four of diamonds and 10 of clubs. Onto the counter plan. Answer the uh, big joker with the little joker. Answer the ace of clubs with the eight of diamonds. Answer the five of hearts with the four of hearts. Four of hearts, eight of diamonds. You said four of hearts twice. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, oh, and the eight of diamonds, extend the eight of diamonds. Sorry, I had the wrong card in my hand. Um, and um, queen of spades, two of hearts. So that should be the... That was a disad. Yeah, the disad. And that's uh, gonna be the two and C. And then for the one and R, I'm gonna go over T, and case. Um, with the big joker, I will answer with 
ace of hearts and the and the k of hearts um with the th three diamonds i'm gonna answer with the k of hearts with the nine of diamonds i'm gonna answer i mean i'm sorry with the king is that yes the, the king of diamonds i'm gonna answer with the nine of diamonds and the jack of diamonds i'm gonna answer with the eight of clubs two of clubs and the um, queen of diamonds and queen of clubs. Okay, and with the on case, I'm going to answer the ten of spades the seven of hearts and the king of spades will be all answered with the nine of hearts. The six of diamonds and the three of clubs will be answered by the seven of spades. The jack of hearts will be answered by the nine of hearts. Cross apply little joker from another sheet of paper. And for 10 of spades, answer with the eight of hearts. You should be finished with the negative block. And we're going to go into the 1AC. I'm in the 1AR. Let me figure out my order. Okay. So my order will be kind of plan. Hospitality, this says. Well, no, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> counter plan. Case, counter plan, topic. Case, counter plan, oh, excuse me. Would be case. This said. No, I'm sorry. Case, <laughs> topicality, this said, counter plan. Case of Kelly, this day comes in, yes, that one. With um, the nine of hearts, answer with three of diamonds and the three of clubs. With the Seven of, of space, answer with the ace of clubs and the jack of hearts with the uh, nine of hearts, answer with the jack of hearts with the big joker I mean, excuse me, with the little joker, answer with the big joker and the jack of clubs. And with the eight of hearts, answer with the 10 of spades, the big joker and the ace of spades. So that was the 20C. With topicality, answer the ace of hearts and the king of hearts with the big joker. Answer the, when they responded to the three of diamonds, um, to the king of, with the king of hearts, respond to that also with the, again with the three of diamonds, but also with the big joker. And also with the nine of diamonds, I'm excuse me. The six of spades.
Okay, and then with the um, the nine of diamonds. Yes, I'm sorry. With the nine of diamonds, Anthony with um, three of diamonds. The eight of clubs and the two of clubs, answer with the three of diamonds. With the queen of diamonds and the queen of clubs, answer with the big joker. On to the dissed. Answer the little joker again with the big joker. And the ace of spades. Answer the eight of diamonds with the ace of spades and the big joker. With the five of uh, five hearts, answer that with the four of hearts again, and also the ten of spades. The eight of diamonds, answer with the big joker. The queen of spades, um, answer with the ten of spades, and the two of hearts, answer with the ace of spades. Kind of plan. Um, answer the king of clubs with the ten of diamonds. I'm mean, sorry. Answer the king of spades. I'm excuse me. Answer the king of clubs with the ten of spades. I'm mean, the king of spades. Excuse me. Let me repeat that again. Answer the king of clubs with the king of spades. Answer the six of clubs with the ten of hearts. And the six of clubs. I'm sorry. Answer the six of club with the four of clubs. Sorry. Answer the six of clubs with the uh, diamond of uh, di ace of diamond. Answer the four of spades with ace of diamond. Answer the four of diamond with the queen of hearts and answer the 10 of clubs with the, with the king of spades. Um, by the way, my partner's in the waiting room. Oh, sorry. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Um, if you could, please, we're going to put a pause in this real quickly just so that we can introduce Gracie. Um, so really quickly, um, introduce yourself. Um, I guess this is my first time meeting you. Tell me what attracts you to debate. And then tell me what grade level you're in. And tell me about your goals for your debate season. Hello, uh, my name is Gracie. I am a senior. Um, what attracts me to the debate is just the diversity of information that's there. I like how we could we could have more about like the fast like we we have a little bit of debate on like fast statistics, but also debate on ideologies. So like I don't know, like the first time like I got really like invested in debate was when I heard like someone do a critique and I was like, oh, that's a different perspective. I really like that. So um, my hopes is to actually learn how to run a critique because I haven't done so beforehand and to um, at least like attend some tournaments this semester or this season. Yeah, yeah. well, I heard that you have a tournament coming up, which is one of the tournaments I've been to twice before. And I don't know which tournament it is, but whatever tournament it is, I've at least um, been successful at the tournament at least uh, twice before. So I can definitely help you get, get there within the time frame that we need. And if you want to do something critique oriented, I'm definitely that person to help you with that. I did critique all through college debate and three out of the four years of my high school debate career. So, um, and I've coached a lot of um, people who have made it to the finals of the tournament of champions doing critiques. So yeah. Um, so um, we were doing an exercise Gracie on floor and we're probably gonna stop it right here and just review the answers that everyone have because we only have an hour left. And I want to do some other things. Um, 
So what I want to do, because I don't think it would be beneficial today to do it, but to help y'all know about what's going to be some possible strategies, I want to see how much strategies that you already have within your pool and within your, your, your piggy bank, I guess, and your coffer to be able to use whenever you need. So I'm going to send y'all like a little assessment. Don't, don't act, it's a quiz. Yes, it is a quiz, but it's not like you, you, it's just to figure out where you are in debate. That's all. I just need to figure out what strategies I need to give you so that when you get to that tournament, you ain't be like, my coach ain't telling me, you know what I'm saying? I need to know what my job is so that we can get you, you know, the pillars you need to be successful. Um, so, yeah. So really quickly, um, I wanted to talk to you, Gracie, just to get you up to date on what we were doing today. Um, I'll get you the announcements later, but right now we're doing a kind of flow drill that I, I was kind of not doing as well as I thought I could do in. I'm like, because I haven't done it in a while. And I'm like, this takes more brain power than I thought. Jesus. Um, but normally when you record debates and the, uh, even if you, I think what's important, some, even if you're a critique debater, you don't necessarily need to um, like flow in a normal debate way. I started debating flowing this way, and this is the way I started flowing and recording rounds after um, I started to do something different. You know, just because you do something different in debate doesn't mean that certain no, no, certain best practices aren't beneficial, right? And I'm not telling you you have your it shouldn't it, it shouldn't be specifically like this, but it should look somewhat like this, like somewhat kind of in the in the realm, like. Your partner should be able to pick it up. I was just telling Nairobi, your coach, it should be something kind of generic that even though it's for you, you want to make sure that you can remember it later because if you lose one time, you don't want to keep losing again, right? You want to remember what they said in the round. You want to remember what happened and you want to make sure that you, because, you know, when you're reading evidence and stuff, you might forget what that team was getting down to or what their strategy was, but if you have it recorded, you have all those pieces there and you don't have to remember about, oh, well, now I'm doing research and I got to think about what was, because I've been doing the research to figure out what they said. And you can't do, you got to know when to have resources available because you can't do all the jobs at once. Um, so yeah, so, you know, I use one color for myself and one color for the other team. You always try to use um, pens, never pencil. And um, there's a little, um, cheat sheet glossary that I use from a debate manual that has symbols. So one of the key things you want to do, Gracie, when you're flowing, is if you hear the word education or government, you want to try to abbreviate those words to EDU, to GOV. If you hear the word organization, ORG. If you hear the word um, money, just write the little S with the little lines in it. Um, you know, you try to abbreviate, but, you know, some of the ones that have been used in the debate that have been become normal lingo and jargon to debate in terms of, you know, how we articulate things on the flow, I'll send you this glossary so you can look over it, maybe use some of the things that you want to use. You don't have to use it. If you figure out some other way to shorten and abbreviate things, you can do so. Most of the times, I think in English, the English rule is just take out all the vowels, like A-E-I-O-U, and you've, abbrevi you've abbreviated a word, right? Like you can spell empowerment with empowerment. Just take out the E, take out the O, and you'll still get out empowerment. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. All right, cool, great. So that's um, really quickly overflowing. Um, just use symbols um, when you can. Use abbreviation when you can. You know, use um, shapes when you can just to, so you don't have to write out the whole sentence. I can still follow this debate without, and they probably read a whole bunch, cards and everything, but I can still follow the debate just because of how I've recorded it, all right? So because of that, we played this game with a deck of cards and we're gonna go over our answers. And so with um, Nairobi, well, do you wanna start first? Or you want Amy to start first? Uh, can Amy go first? Okay, Amy, why don't you read, cause we went up to what? Basically the one AR, right? Yeah, you finished the one AR. Okay, so explain the dispatch, um, up to the 1AR. What do you have on your flow? Oh, before we continue, I just want to make sure, Gracie, we use basically decks of cards in place of arguments. So, just say, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So each one of these would be an argument and a card and a citation. Okay, go ahead. Um, the negative started with the uh, Jack of Spades and the Little Joker. Um, the Seven of Diamonds, the Eight of Diamonds, the Four of Hearts, uh, and then F cross applied the Big Joker. Um, the Ace of Spades. And then they read the Ace of Spades, the Ace of Clubs, the Ten of Spades, the Eight of Spades, and the Five of Hearts. Um, negative uh, answered the cross applied big joker with the little joker. Um, they answered the ace of clubs with by extending the eight of diamonds. Um, and then they also just extended the eight of diamonds. Um, and then they answered the five of hearts with the four of hearts, the eight of diamonds, um, the queen of spades and the two of hearts. And then uh, in the one AR, um, Affirmative answered the little joker by extending the big joker again, and then also extending the ace of spades. Um, they answered the eight of diamonds by uh, extending the ace of spades and the big joker again. Um, and then uh, answering the four of hearts, uh, they extended the five of hearts, the 10 of spades. Um, the answering the eight of diamonds, they uh, used the big joker again. Uh, the queen of spades, they uh, answered by extending the 10 of spades. And then the two of hearts, they answered by ex ex uh, extending, excuse me, the ace of spades. Yep, that was actually perfect. That's exactly what I had. So no, when you're, that's, um, that, and the, the point thing in this procedure to get is everybody may view the round differently. Everybody's gonna extrapolate something differently. Like my partner is my partner for a reason. She, she or he, or they should not be repeating the same things that I am stating, uh, that I'm saying. They should be adding to my argument, right? So um, everybody, but at the same time, should have some type of understanding of what those main parts are. And so to get a grip on those main parts, you know, that's why you try to keep a record of, of a flow. Um, you want to go ahead, Nairobi? Which one do you want to choose to see if you have it right? Um... Can I just do one AC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so um, we started with the nine of spades. Then we moved into the three of diamonds, three of hearts, and then the three of clubs. And then the five of diamonds, ace of clubs, two spades, the two of spades, jack of hearts, the big joker, the ten of spades, ace of spades, and the jack of clubs. Then what happened in the one and C? So then in the one and C for topicality, it was the ace of hearts, the king of hearts, the nine of diamonds, the six of spades, uh, the eight of clubs and the two of clubs. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna back up. Okay. So um, topicality, so so you did, did you flow topicality on the same paper as the affirmative? Um, I've split them into different groups. Like, okay. So what did you have? So let's just go back to the affirmative flow because there was more stuff on the affirmative flow. So after you, you said you had the jack of clubs, what did you have in the one and C for? Because there was on case arguments made by the. Well, no, there wasn't any on case arguments. It was made by the what? Yeah, no, there was on case arguments made by the one and C, right? Yeah. Yeah, there were three, three of them, right, Amy? That's correct. How many, you didn't get any of those Nairobi? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Anyway, we're going to, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll do this practice in the time. We'll do more practice drills. I just want you to start getting the hang of it. Um, and, but, and just, just to show you, because I was flowing what he was saying, right? So I have a flow that's, the disad, I wrote DA, and you can see this is what it looks like, right? All I flowed was the disad, and then all I flowed was the F responses to the disad and nothing else on this piece of paper. And then I have a, did the same thing for topicality. And that helps to keep it cleaner so that you can see how the argument progresses, but also it makes it so that like when you're debating, you know, the topicality and counterplan and plan, those are like separate 
boxes and you should be keeping those arguments separate. It helps you keep organized. It helps you make sure the judge understands everything in an organized way. That's why we want you to flow it on a separate piece of paper. It may seem extra. Like you may be like, why do I have to do that? Trust us. It's very important that you float on an extra piece of paper. And, and, let me, and let me tell you something about this tournament because I've been to this tournament. These kids will try to read several arguments, but they don't know what they're talking about. They're trying to read these arguments because they, their coach told them. Now, Robert, you are a very good critical thinker. Gracie, you seem to catch on very easily. Y'all will be surprised at how much you'll be like, dang, they make it seem hard, but it's really not that hard. If you are able to be like, shut, you can, and, and see, there's, there's some things that I did here that you'll learn about where you can do what's called, you heard when I said the word cross apply. Remember yeah. Here? That means if I have this argument that can answer all these different arguments, why not use that argument to answer one, two, and three? Or why not just group arguments? There was moments where I said, um, let's see on the flow. Um, let's go into topicality where I said eight of, where, um, down in the negative block, I said the eight of clubs and the two of clubs, add those together and, and respond to that with the three of diamonds, right? Did you get that, Amy? Okay, see, and we both have that. And, and every from the judge to the person on the other side of the room, the, your opponent, you don't want to, you want to even, you want to be catching them on their flows too. Like, do you even know what you said? You know what I'm saying? But if you have the debate recorded correctly, you can catch them if they put something where they shouldn't have or something or, or mess up the flow, right? Because like, <laughs> you know, if they drop something important, that could win you the whole round. And if they drop it, it's because they messed up. They didn't, they, they're probably not going to even realize they dropped it. It's up to you to realize that they dropped it. And then you have to call them out on it. And then you could like cinch the whole round pretty early on if they mess up like that. But you're not going to catch that if you're not flowing, like, like we're going to teach you how to flow. That's the purpose of flowing that way is so that when they make a mistake, it's super obvious to you because it's right there on the paper. You can see it. So that's why, that's why we're, and, and that exercise probably seemed really complicated, but once you get more used to it, it it'll, it'll get easier. It'll get easier. Yeah, no. Um, the first time I did this, I was scrambling. Like, <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, uh. and I just want to reiterate what Amy was saying here. I have literally just the disc set and my flow, just one argument box together. Topicality, separate piece of paper, counter plan, separate piece of paper. And then See, and I think where you got confused at um, Nairobi is that um, here's, and this is why you use two colors because you start the debate. So the affirmative, I just, you know, after I gave the speech, I backflowed afterwards, but you typically do it before, right? Because you already have your speech. But in this event, I didn't know what order I was going to lay out the cards. So, and you know, the cards, it's not a speech. So, but um, when you typically already have your 1AC, you don't you you don't need to be flowing during the round. You don't flow it before the round. My, matter of fact, what you should do, if you know how many rounds you're gonna say this tournament has six rounds, right? You should before you come to the tournament, you know what your one AC is, have six rounds pre-float of your one AC. It's just that simple. You already have your one AC, you already know what, what's gonna be said. Have a sheet of paper, whether you want to do taco style like this, and we have the long ones. So if you need more space, we have the long ones to provide to you. Again, eight by 11 works just fine for me because I learned how to write small. But, you know, you want to make sure that affirmative is black, like I told you, and then negative is red. So the affirmative was here and they started with, on, this is on case argument. So the affirmative had the plan, inherency, solvency, all that stuff. And then the negative said, no, maybe you don't solve. No, maybe you, you aren't inherent. And then you would follow those on case off. I mean, yes. You will follow up with those on case negative arguments right after the 1AC. Does that make sense? Yeah. You wouldn't put that on top of calories. You would put that right next to on case negative goes with next to the on case affirmative stuff. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do a presentation real quick. Um, and this is a strategy you'll, you'll learn how to use yourself. And this is a strategy you'll learn how to answer. Gracie, you still with us? Give me a thumbs up. Great. So this is one of the first um, times, again, I was the second negative constructive. Nairobi, you're the second negative constructive. 
And what's interesting about and Gracie, um, you're gonna like this uh, probably too because as the one in R, most of the times most people shove this one on the one in R. But a lot of people think that the one in R cannot win a debate. Gracie, you will learn how to be probably that one in R. They can probably take this argument after Nairobi kills it in the two MC, right? Or maybe you know, or you know, or she well, she'll probably help continue to kill it for you in the two and R is what I'm saying. Um, but yeah. This is the argument that you can start off with, and, and people won't think it's a big argument, but it's really a big argument, and it's, it's important. It's called topicality, right? And topicality is a, is a negative argument you use on the negative side. It's an off-case argument, because remember, you have off, on-case negative, you have on, on-case negative arguments, which are specific about the affirmative, right? But then you have off-case negative off arguments, which means they are positions that aren't directly related to the affirmative. So an example of an off-case negative argument would be like a disadvantage, right? Like an economy disadvantage. You spend some, your, your plan maybe does solve, but it creates this other impact that is off of what you do, right? You, or, or maybe this disadvantage that's off-case turns your affirmative, right? Maybe that you maybe your plan needs money, but you know what I'm saying? We can't provide the money that you need for your plan because right now you're crippling the economy. Maybe we should wait for your plan or however that this that is articulated. But um, yeah, so uh, that's what an off case is. So it's a counter plan, so it's a critique. And lastly, what we're going to be talking about today, topicality, is an off case negative position. And this is a theory argument as well. Um, I want to be clear about this because I'm, I'm sometimes I myself when I'm talking about this argument, maybe this is where you want to jump in, Amy, because um, I had to go against topicality. I didn't really run topicality a lot. I was mostly the person getting ran topicality against. Um, but um, topicality is an argument that talks about the bounds of what you can talk about in the debate realm. That's why we have a resolution. One of the ex examples that my debate coach used to use all of the time, and sometimes I would have to use this analogy in debate rounds, is that you can't score touchdowns in the 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 in, in the bleachers, right? You have an end zone, and that's where you touch. That's where you make the touchdown. Within those limits, you can make a touchdown. You can't be in the stand next to me while I'm ordering hot dog, talking about touchdown, sir. <laughs> like, get away from me. You're supposed to be on the field. Why are you up in here? You can't do that. Like there's like when you go to a football game, they play only on the field where they have lines, limits, what you what they can they can't they can't play up there with me. You know what I'm saying? That'd be cool if the players could be that, you know, up close to you, but that's not how football is played. There's order, there's structure, they need to be able to, you know, they have time constraints, and so does debate. So, um I don't but in terms of theory, um I know we talked about off-case positions. Theory to me is also um, topicality is a theory argument, but it's, it's it's separate. It's a bigger theory argument in the sense that some theory arguments are talking about how we should talk about these arguments and what are the rules of debate. But topicality is probably the biggest rule of debate because it, it conducts everything else. So when you hear people talk about theory arguments, theory arguments will be on a separate piece of paper. In my opinion, depending, it depends because some 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 debaters like to answer each theory argument on each sheet of paper, right? Like they might, you know, because here's the, here's what I mean to say, Nairobi and Gracie. When you're negative, you can drop arguments into two to an R, right? Let's say, like in in this in today's practice debate, right? You had three off case positions and one affirmative, one affirmative with one plan text, and then you had a dissed topicality and counter plan. And the reason why you have a dissed and counter plan together is because counter plan is just that it's a different plan that tries to solve the affirmative better than affirmative without being topical, of course, because that's the affirmative's job. And also it creates there's some nut benefit that the affirmative does. Like you can't just be like, I have a piece of cake and we're supposed to be celebrating confectionery, and then somebody else brings ice cream, and then it's like, no, this is both sweet. Like we both done the job. But maybe if the assignment was like, you know, something for a cool day, maybe the maybe ice cream would be the better resolution, right? But depending on the, the resolution um, is how we define and um, how counterplans can be competitive and how they can have net benefits. So 
Um, when it comes to disadvantages, disadvantages um, provide net benefits. So that's why you always have it there with a, a counter plan. But, um, and then you have topicality. So you have three off case positions that you would have in the debate. And so let's say you get down to the negative block and, and you think you might be losing topicality, right? You can drop topicality um, if you want, right? Um, but there's, you know, procedures about that sometimes, right? Sometimes people will say, no, you can't do that. Um, no, also about counter plans. Sometimes you can drop counter plans. Sometimes, you know, people will say, no, you can't drop the counter plan in the QNR. You got to stick with it. And um, what I would do also, as we're talking about, you know, off case positions, a lot of times you can ask the team, like, are you going to stick, stick with this through the whole round? Are you going to kick out of it? Like, or is this something you're not really sure that you're going to kick out of until you hear the 2AC? Like, what are you going to do, right? And so that's what theory arguments are for me. Amy, I know you want to chime in for a second, maybe to help explain it a little better. Yeah, so, so theory, he was, Mathino said it pretty much, theory arguments are just basically a, us arguing about how we think debate should be conducted, whether that's over the resolution, whether that's over how we kick arguments, which he was alluding to. Uh, the one thing I just wanted to add is that the advantage of running multiple off case arguments, multiple off case positions when you're the negative is it gives you options when you go into the 2NR, right? And if you only run a counter plan and a disad, you basically have to stick with that even if you're losing it. But if you run topicality, maybe you're winning on topicality. Maybe you don't care anymore about the counter plan and the disad because you're going to win this round on topicality. So you kick out of that other stuff. And then in the two NR, because, you know, with the neg block, you have 13 minutes to talk. Like you can go for all of it at that point. But the two NR, you only have five minutes. So you need to think strategically, what am I winning on? And that's what I'm going to spend my five minutes doing. I'm going to spend my, all my five minutes on the thing that is going to win me this round. And I'm not going to waste time on the stuff that isn't going to win me this round. Um, and the advantage of topicality is that unlike uh, it's kind, it can potentially happen, but for the most part, unlike a disad, unlike a counter plan, they can't turn topicality on you. So topicality is, is a pretty good safe negative strategic option where you can just kind of throw it out there. And then if you're not winning on it, forget it, who cares? You know, you're not going to lose the round on topicality. So you can just say, ah, forget topicality and move on to the other stuff. So it's, oh, it's a great negative option to have going into the 2NR. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, so basically we'll be talking about topicality today. Um, what I usually do myself to help myself prepare for topicality, I would just keep a dictionary um, nearby. Um, a lot of debaters do that. Um, nowadays, um, you know, um, dictionaries and books are, a thing of the past nowadays. I feel so old. Um, so if you want to use a dictionary app or something like that, you can just have it loaded on your computer because um, you're going to need that to be able to respond to topicality. I never really kept a, I would keep um, maybe some answers and some front lines that I knew that I might, um, I try to be as topical as possible. You should. Uh -huh unless you're doing some other crazy stuff like I did sometimes. But even in, even in those times, you, you want to make sure that you have the big words like substantially, um, the big words like um, bodies of water, you know, those types of things. You want to make sure that you have that defined for yourself. You don't want to make sure that you have topicality answers prepared to respond to some of those bigger topicality arguments. And, um, Amy was saying this earlier, and I kind of agree this year, top tally is going to be a big thing. So that's why I, this was one of the first things I want to talk about, um, because I think it'll be a useful strategy just because it'll help you understand how to work out neg off case positions. Any, anyway, I think it probably should be. I probably should have learned top tally before I learned this said, honestly, <laughs> I think that probably would have helped me a lot better as a debater because I started learning this set first and politics this set. And I, I hated politics with that. I didn't mind um, trade off or economy just that so much, but I didn't like politics with that. And topicality is fun because you don't have to do a lot of card cutting work. It's pretty much just definitions and playing like I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It's kind of like playing the thesaurus. But anyway, 
So topicality, what is it? Um, my computer's acting slow. Um, can y'all see the whole screen? Well, what I'm presenting? Yeah. Okay. So topicality, it was test the limits of the topic, the discussion of debate. Um, touchdowns can't be made in the stands, right? Like I can't be getting my nachos and see like uh, Ray Rice getting a touchdown while I'm getting my nachos. Like, so you're supposed to be on the field. Get, get within the bounds of the football field. Topicality exists to limit what the affirmative may talk about, such as negative can have a reasonable chance to argue against the case. Of course, you know, the topic is chosen by debaters nationwide, and it's pretty broad so that we can have different pockets to talk about, right? Um, this topic is, is allowing people to talk about um, hydraulic fraction, fracking, Bodies of water underneath our soil, groundwater. We have affirmatives talking about um, protecting coastlines. The um, the affirmative that we have that the um, league is using is the affirmative about rivers. So, um, am I glitching any bit, or can y'all hear me pretty well? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, you're glitching a little bit, but we can hear you. Okay. 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 Um, so it's just making sure that the negative has ground and opportunity to be able to, uh, you know, have enough opportunity for research and those types of things. So parts of topicality, um, probably, you know, I'll share this with you all if you want to, you know, let me share this with you. Um, I probably want to add some more stuff to this. So uh, just give me about a, another few more days because I, I don't know, I might want to add some more information. I feel like I'm missing some pieces um, or some other things that could be done. Um, but um, parts of topicality, typically you have definition, right? It'll say, for example, the words of the res resolution is resolved. The United States federal government should substantially increase its water protection in the United States, right? That's the wording of the topic. I probably missed some words, but for the most part, I got it, right? Um, so one of the words I can choose as a, a word that needs to be defined could be bodies of water. Is bodies of water related to the topic ocean? One of the examples that you'll see following up will say that if you're trying to protect oceans, that's not a part of the topic. And there's a definition in a word that's chosen that will best fit why oceans is not a part of the topic. And basically you're saying that, that the, the other team has violated our opportunity to have access to enough ground and research towards the topic to be able to debate against them, right? Like we need to make sure that we have somewhat of predictability and the understanding of what you're going to be talking about. And um, after you talk about violation, you have standards. Standards basically, again, is some of the things I talked about being predictable, having a negative ground, and those other reasons to prefer or standards. We have to have standards in debate so it can be fair. And, you know, I'm basically doing it on shell right now. Now I'm hearing it out loud. So, voters, but voters basically education. We come to debate to learn. And it needs to be fair. So those are reasons to vote for this particular argument because if we're not having fairness in debate, why even have debate? This should be a fair training ground for our future policymakers, presidents, whatsoever, people like myself who are teaching kids into the nonprofit world. Or for anybody who's doing any type of like war amongst the community, like we have, we have to understand fairness and, and that type of thing, right? So um, again, really quickly, just the definition, what is definition again? It's the evidence that defines one or more important words in the resolution. So again, you'll be picking out a word in the resolution and saying that the other team does not meet the standards of that definition that you've chosen. Sorry, going too far ahead. Violation. So the violation is meaning that they violated that definition. They don't meet the, the, the criteria of that definition. Um, Yeah, so I don't know why that's there. I, I, I must have meant to add something there. I gotta um, probably make sure I correct some things here. Reasons to prefer. So I call these standards in debate. A lot of kids call these reasons to prefer. Um, it's just basically the reasons why the negative team um, provides a better definition and why you should prefer the negative side on this for the purposes of those um, reasons for you know our are, um, what do you call it, you know, for fairness and education. Um, types of standards, 
um, limits, which means that in debate we must have limits in order for people to, you know, make sure that they're that you know there's enough predictability and research. Bright line is basically saying, hey, there's a clear jurisdiction, like it's clear where we need to stay. You're just being a you know an a hole now by not sticking to the resolution. Ground means I need to have stuff to research. I need to have I need to have stuff to talk about. And the fact that you have not provided those limits, I, I couldn't be predictable. Um, I couldn't have research, and then you have jurisdiction. All those things are kind of the same, but these are the reasons. These are some of the words you want to use as reasons to prefer. And there's other jurisdictions out there. I can get them to you, but these are just some that people use. Amy, do you know any other ones, by the way? No? Go ahead. If you have any more um, reasons to prefer or standards, let, let me know. Um, yeah, I actually, because <laughs> we were talking earlier about uh, our own, uh, I, I made a presentation on topicality. So for mine, I included predictability, uh, ground, education, fairness, limits, um, extra topicality. So extra topicality is like when... Oh, I'm, I was getting there. Oh, you're getting there. And then, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I had effects T and I also put um, topical version of the AF. TBA. Oh, I don't have that one. So we'll, when I get to that section that I'm going to cover, I want you to do that topical version of the app. Okay, got you. All right, so yeah, these are the types of standards. I'll call these standards. Maybe I've been taught different ways. Um, I don't really, this is just how I was taught. Um, just, sometimes jurisdiction can be a stand. Um, I mean, let me go to the next slide so I can help you understand. So voters. So voters for me are education, fairness, jurisdiction. Those are what I would consider um, voters. And it's basically uh, the reason why the affirmative should lose the debate um, because they're not being topical. We need to, you know, debate needs to be debatable. Like there needs to be some fair chance that I might win this. Like you just can't come in and talk about anything. You want to talk about the shoes, sir? No, we don't talk about the shoes. Um, so again, voters, yeah, uh, voters, voters. Why do we have voters, types of voters? Um, yeah, okay, so this is an example of, hold on, make sure I'm not scrolling too fast. So yeah, those are the types of voters. Uh, we talked about that, fairness and education. I just wanna make sure I'm not skipping over anything. All right, so an example of um, uh, topicality is, um, this is one that I found that I thought was a pretty good one that I think could be used um, because there are some affirmatives that talk about um, coastal protection. Now, I'm not saying they might not, beat you on it but you know depending on how unprepared to respond to um, or how much they how much they how ill prepared they are at extending their affirmative if they're not prepared to extend their affirmative you may win this topicality argument so this topicality argument i'm not real but you want to re re uh, read what it says right there uh it's a little hard to read can you zoom in a bit let me see if I can. Oh, hold on. Well, I'm going to read parts of it and then. There we go. Okay. And now my computer wants to be slow. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. I don't know why it's not okay. I'm gonna just read it. I'm gonna just read it. It's giving me pain and headaches, and we're. I want to get through this pretty quickly, so um, I'm gonna just read it for you, so you can just follow along with me, because I know I have eye problems. That's why I'm like going down here. That's why my face is all up in the screen. <laughs> um, substantial means in the main. So this particular piece of evidence, um, they got their evidence from words and phrases. You can see the volume, the page number, the year that it was published. Substantial means in substance, in the main essential, including material or essential parts. So it says the main and essential parts is groundwater, right? And there's a piece of evidence that says that we don't use um, salination water, right? We don't, you know, a, a lot of ocean water, you know, even though we have desalination, you know, that's constantly hard. And to be in the main, the main of what we use is groundwater. And so that's what this, um, this is what the uh, negative is saying why the affirmative is not important because it focuses on maybe coastal water shores, maybe it deals with water, uh, ocean protection, and that's not groundwater. That's not water that we use 
typically to drink. Our main source of water is groundwater and freshwater resources. So uh, uh, here you see where it talks about the violation. The plan protects non-surface groundwater, which is not substantial, you know, as the definition has provided. Um, reasons to prefer ground and limits. I didn't, you know, of course you want to actually say something there. I didn't say anything there, but you should say something there. <laughs> um, Oopsie, um, probably should have went over this again, but yeah. And then re, um, the reasons why you should vote for uh, the negative um, limits, um, you know, we should have limits of debate. Um, usually limits is also considered jurisdiction. That's another word for it. Um, and then ground, we need to have ground because, you know, that is what, is what helps us maintain our education is so that, you know, everybody has, has a fair chance. So ground, I don't know why this won't do it. Sorry guys, there we go. Brown. All right. So yeah, um, they allow for the oceans. Of course, I was again, like I was talking about saying new water surfaces. Um, you know, you know, that's not what that happens. That's not what the resolution should be focusing on. What the negative is going to say. And then how do you answer topic challenge? So now I'm the affirmative. I heard what they said. They didn't hit me with the violation. They didn't hit me with, you know, what they thought I should have been saying. No, this is what you do. You say no, sir or ma'am or them. We meet your definition. Not only do we meet your definition, we provide you a counter interpretation that we also meet. So not only do we meet your interpretation, but we meet our own. So that double proves the point that we are topical, right? And you give, you know, I put, I usually put my non-voters at the bottom. That's just me. Uh, but then I, you know, try to respond to their limits, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and then you you know you explain why they there are no reasons to vote for them. You reverse the verdict and say because of the fact that maybe they could have asked you some questions in cross sex to prove that you know you know maybe they thought maybe they didn't understand machinery or something that you use that is intangible because you know ocean leads to wires which leads to lakes. Nothing is you know separated from each other, right? And so there has to be some impact there as to you know, how one thing may impact the other. Um, so that's why you have reverse, reversing the, you know, that's how you can reverse the voting issues. Maybe you're actually explaining this topic in a comprehensive way that provides the education, right? That's actually necessary in debate and the ground that's necessary in debate. So that's how you kind of respond to that. Um, yep, that you're reasonable, you know, those types of things that you're actually within it. Now there's, Specific types of topicality. I'm gonna let you go to the first one that you talk about. A topical version of the app, or what you'll hear abbreviated as a TVA, is basically a way that the the negative is going to accuse your affirmative plan of not being topical, and in the sense that you could have been topical, but you chose not to. So they're going to present a topical version of your affirmative plan, and then say that this is the reason the judge should vote against you because you essentially chose a non-topical AF in order to get out of like disadvantaged links or whatever. So for example, last year, Nuriel and Jan were running an AF that their version of the abolish ICE AF. Um, I don't know if you guys ever debated them last year, but they actually didn't have a plan text. Um, and it was part of their, um, you know, like uh, part of their sort of uh, protest against the structure of debate, right? That they were refusing to present a plan text. And when they took this to outside tournaments, everybody was destroying them on TVA because they were essentially, they just presented a plan text and they were like, look, you could have just done this. You could have been topical, but you chose not to present a plan text in order to prevent the negative from linking you to disadvantages from running a counter plan, because how can they run a counter plan if you didn't run a plan? So, and there are different versions of that, right? Like you could, they could say, um, you know, for, the river rights app, if they're gonna say rivers is not substantial enough, they could say you could have run a plan, the topical version of the app could have been all water is, um, is now a legal person. And that's their topical version of the app. Um, that's probably not gonna win in that case because it wasn't quite as egregious as uh, not having a plan text, um, but it, it's a possible tactic that they could take against you. That's what topical version of the app is, or TVA is how they abbreviate it. Um, let me just say this. For me, I was what I got, I got this, 
I, I got this bad rep. I'm not gonna say bad rep. I consider it a bad rep. Uh, for I guess, I guess how the debate community sees me at large. I through my debate career, I was the flash debater. Like, oh, what is he gonna do next? Like, what fun things he gonna do next? Which I guess I did like to make my 180 pretty fun, and I would use media and stuff like that. And I didn't have a plan to take some time. Sometimes it was very deliberate, and I would hear those arguments all the time. But it got to the point where people weren't running those arguments. The most I would hear was framework. That was, it got to a point where I wouldn't even hear that. They just started hitting me with framework because they knew that don't play with me like that. I, I know what I'm doing. And sometimes, you know, I wouldn't have necessarily, sometimes I would be like, this is explicit in, you know, saying I, I have an advocacy statement, right? And you can have an advocacy statement. You don't have to have necessarily a plan text, but you, you know, and sometimes a lot of debaters will use the word um, uh, resolve, right, as one of the topicality um, definitions and say that resolve means to use a policy, right, and that your affirmative does not use a policy because you have not endorsed the United States federal government. And in the resolution, you should say United States federal government. And there's another affirmative. And some of these topicalities people use in tandem with each other, right? Sometimes people do affect topicality and extra, to and extra topicality, which we're going to talk about here. But um, let's go to, um, we were talking about agents, right, United States federal government. So the A spec topicality is basically saying that you have not specified, see, I can't even see, see, I was late at night doing this, see, I was, words are all backwards. The app does not specify the agent uh, um, that implements the change of action. I'm sorry, I was not spelling last night well, um, or whenever I made it. So yeah, so that's what it means is that you have not specified the agent. Do you use Congress? Is, is Biden signing some executive order? Who's doing what? We need to know, right? Because this, I need to know so I can have the grounds to debate you. Like, I need to know who's doing what. Like, I need to know where the money's coming from, if this organization is the right organization, what they stand by, what their values are, all that. Extra topicality, right? Extra topicality means that um, basically you and parts of your plan you ain't need to solve for. You don't need to be Superman. You don't need to be Wonder Woman. You don't need to be solved for everything in the world. You, you're providing extra, you're going outside of the topic and solving for things and having advantage to things that are not within the realms of debate. I didn't know you were going to be talking about solving for Ethiopia when it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be solving the water problems in the United States, right? Extra topicality. Effects topicality. Effects topicality alleges the firm team is not topical and it's a direct plan. So that means you have some indirect action. Um, but only arise after alleviating the harms introduced by the firm's term, typically fit the topic through a variety of internal links. So you need to have like, if for example, internal links is basically how do you get there, right? Like how 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 does that process? How do we get to that result, basically, right? If I say I saw for the the water crisis in America, how how the what are the the parts and pieces, what are the internal links that we call a debate that gets you there? And so it needs to be very direct. If you got to do too many internal links to solve for the resolution, then maybe, or maybe being uh, effects topical. If you got to, if it has to be like a domino effect, then that's effects topicality. Am I saying that right, Amy? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the solvency cannot come from something outside of the plan text. Yep. And next slide, is that the last slide? I think that's the last slide. Yeah. Um, because to clarify, um, so for the, because I know uh, Gracie and Nairobi are going to the bottle tournament. Um, they can't run topicality there, right? Because they have to stick. No, 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 no. no, if they're an open, yeah. They, if they're an open, they can. Um, not for the first tournament, but after the, the first tournament. Great. But um, the Des Moines. Oh, of course. Tournament. Their topicality will be there. So yeah. bottle tournament, they're, you don't have to worry about this, but the very next if week. They're, if they're not going open, if they're not going, if they are going novice, then yes, at the Valley tournament, they do have uh, restrictions. They're more open than what BAUDL is. Um, but if they're if they're going open in Valley or Caucus, or whatever that tournament is, is in Des Moines, then that the open division will be open. Which means that topicality will be something that yes. you, you may encounter and you may have yes. to answer it. Yeah. So, oh, excuse me, I was just giving you this so that you can be heads up. Getting used to practicing it, because I want you to, see, I want you to, you know, you can look at some, some of these people's topics, 
maybe you look at um as they as they you know people are not are not going to be running um we're going to be introducing some new affirmatives um throughout the season so that y'all don't you know y'all have some variety of what you want to choose from or if y'all want to switch stuff um with as you're going through your student leadership council um activities and stuff you want to switch out because she's going to be doing Brooke is going to be doing more advanced comprehensive stuff most of my stuff is going to make sure that you have again the fundamentals to back up what the is doing but i want to make sure that there's that transition into you guys being able to feel the mastery of being able to go into an open division so um yeah think about topicality i, I guess the what, the important thing about topicality too right is like if you if they if you don't answer it this ad you can still potentially say well it doesn't matter my case outweighs right if you don't un answer topicality you will lose the round yeah. like you need to answer topicality you must answer it and that's why because that's why you know we don't want to send you to a tournament where potentially you could be hitting topicality and we didn't give you the tools for how to answer it so and remember keep that in mind yeah, sorry to interrupt, Amy. But also too, Nairobi, remember during the flow drill, I put topicality first, right? Um, and I was remember I was thinking about it, and I'm like, no, put topicality first because right after you explain the one AC again, you're basically already talking about the affirmative and how your resolution is. So you might as well go straight into topicality. See, this is like Nairobi, like Nairobi, you're pretty, you're getting in the hang of being prepared, like how you was like, I need to get, you know, this together, this together. Being efficient is what's going to help you win debates because a lot of kids are not efficient and a lot of kids are not prepared. And if and, and, and if you are original and if you like if you take the example of the shell that we have today, you can find words that you can be like, dang, these people are not meeting these definitions and these affirmative. You can create your own shell. It's not that hard. This is probably the easiest argument you can create in your own debate. The easiest. It takes you literally five minutes. Literally, the only sort of card you need is the definition. The definition. The like, most that's people it. don't even have cards. Like, I would do the definition, that's it. Some people would have a definition and a card, which is fine, which you saw in the example, which, which, which is the reason why I chose it. But you don't need it. You just, like I said, a dictionary, carry around your dictionary. Get your dictionary app, you'll be fine. You can twerk it out with a dictionary. You'll be winning debates with a dictionary, I promise you. Uh, I know that I think Gracie and Nairobi, you guys were potentially coming to Oakland Tech to hang out with us for our practices on Monday. Um, yeah. I hope I see you guys there. We are very yeah. excited to have you. Um, obviously, I'm the coach for Oakland Tech. Gracie, I don't, I don't think I got to introduce myself. I'm Amy. I'm the coach there. So um, you're going to be working with me probably. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I already wrote a shell. Uh, for why the River Rights app is not topical. So I will, <laughs> you can work with me and Nariel and Nathaniel, and I will show you what that looks like and I'll show you how to run it. And we can't do it at the first tournament, but at the second tournament, you guys are going to be wrecking rooms with this topicality argument. So um, I think that on Monday, we are going to be covering um, the River Rights NEG packet. So I'm like just going to be going over it and explaining it. And um, you have really two major strategic options based on the negative packet you got. You can run the counter plan and the disad, or you can run the critique and on case. Um, so we're going to be going over what that means and what that's going to look like and, uh, you know, a little bit of how to answer it. <laughs> and then I'm hoping to get sort of a read on what part of the packet you guys are interested in. Um, and then we can deep dive into that, right? Like if you guys are more interested in the critique, I think you said you want to run the critique. I think that most Oakland Tech is going to be more interested in the critique. So then after that, we're going to deep dive into the critique because even if you're more interested in the critique, you still need to know how to answer the counter plan, right? Because somebody might run it against you. But uh, that's what we're going to be doing on Monday. So I hope that you guys come. We are so excited to have you join us. Um, and yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to add to what Amy was saying. Um, I'm going to be here Thursday, so please join me on Thursdays. Um, if you want to brush up on your basics, you can join Sakai on Tuesdays. Um, outside of that, if you have questions you about your homework, you have questions about debate stuff that we've reviewed, or you want to ask stuff about stuff that happened in your past debate rounds, past debate tournaments, you want to figure it out, I have 17 years worth of experience, okay? I have a gigantic amount of knowledge that I've just been 
dying to like share with people. Um, I've been debating in Kansas City. I've not had a debate experience in Baltimore. And so now I have a debate experience here. So please, please, please just hit me up. I can definitely help prepare you. I've been to this tournament. I got the trophies to prove to you that I've done well in Iowa. Um, so um, I know what that circuit is like. Um, I can, you know, Amy's there, you know, as a location for you. But outside of that, if you, if, if Amy's not available, you also have me too. If whatever, if you can't come to those practices, because on Tuesdays, um, I may have practices, but most of them are not between four and six. So if um, you're, you know, if I don't know your practice is at three, right? No, I'm sorry. Your practice is at three. Our, our practice is at 3.50, the Monday one. Oh, so it is from like four-ish. Okay. It's like from so, four to five. Yeah, yeah. So four to five during those times, I'm pretty much always available. Um, so you already know about the tournament. Um, I'm going to put your emails in the chat, please. Put your emails in the chat um, so that um, so I'm going to have my attendance, but also to um, I can, we can start doing some debate work because Des Moines is a big tournament. Um, it's, it's a really big tournament. I've been every, I've, I went every four years that I went. I think one year I did well at Valley, then the next year I didn't do well at Valley, and then I did do well at Valley. And then the same thing with Iowa Caucus. I did well my first two years and didn't do well my last two years. I wanted the bus, the, could they give you a George Washington like bus? The, oh, that's the cool thing. The trophy is amazing. They give you a George Washington bus. So it's one of the coolest trophies in the country to get. Um, I've always wanted one. So if y'all can help me get one through y'all, <laughs> y'all could be like my little debate children. Like I can live um, um, through y'all, I guess. But yeah, um, yeah, I, the kids there are, you know, you'll be able to do well there. And I think um, we can definitely help prepare you. I think we have enough time. So let's make some things happen. And also too, about the critique, I cut a lot of the stuff in the critique. So there's, I don't, I think, Jonah's holding off on some of the stuff because he wants to help get this slowly extrapolated. But if we need to like figure out what he did add in that file, and there was some stuff that I wanted to add in the file, I still have those cards. Um, and we can do more research. This is what I get paid to do. So, um, because New York, Nuriel and them are preparing for tournaments, so I'm trying to gear up to research stuff. Um, for y'all. So yeah, um, let me know. Um, we can set up a thread, and also y'all should be communicating with each other, right? Like Nairobi, like when you get something done, when you review something, you know, talk to Gracie, and if y'all need help after, like, y'all don't know what to do next. After you do something, it's like, damn, I feel like I should be prepared to do something, but I don't know what that is. I know what it is, because I've had, I don't know how many debate rounds I've had. I was super distinction in NFL by the time I was a junior, so... You know, um, I have all the rounds necessary to, to I've, I'm not saying just in terms of being able to win. I've lost a lot of rounds to tell you how not to make the same mistakes that I've lost. OK, so and I've lost a lot of them. <laughs> so um, Let me see. Um, did you you had a little hand up symbol? Did you have like a question? Sorry, I just saw that. Oh, sorry. Um, It was like it was just a question. How can we can use Top Cali for our the next tournament. I was just wondering why. Um, the first time that that was the rule that we made. I was part of the decision, so this is a question I should answer. It was just the fact that we want to make sure that everyone felt fair. We want to make sure that the whole league that you know we didn't want to throw out so much stuff that we were just we didn't know what we were talking about because we were talking about so many topics and we didn't want the kids to feel like we didn't want to feel overwhelmed with the 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 nature of feeling like kids wouldn't. You know, we want to make sure everyone in the league could feel like they were talking about everything and there wasn't there wasn't a separation in terms of groups like oh this one no we should all feel like a team we can all have this conversation and then we can expand on that it won't be the same way for novices either novices get more opportunities to add more stuff you're not a novice but the novices who are watching um, you'll have more opportunities to be able to um, do stuff as the round as the year comes out we'll be doing again more supplements of evidence. And you'll be able to have more leeway. We just want to make sure that everybody, we uh, too, you can, why move so fast if you ain't got the first thing? We need to make sure we get this first before we head on into the next thing. And it's not just about you, it's also about me. I need to make sure I have y'all give you the right evidence because sometimes these debates get fleshed out and we be like, all right, we need to change some things to make sure that your education and that your strategy is up to par. Yeah, you have four negative options already. 
So making sure that you guys understand the counter plan, understand the diss set, understand the critique, understand the on case, then we can move on to topicality. <laughs> like that's already a lot that's getting thrown at you guys. So. This critique is like a multiple world critique, honestly. It's like multiple, like, I don't even know. It's like meta on meta on meta of like what you can do with this type of critique. It has like a Gombin parts, both your parts. It has so many parts. Um, yeah. It has yeah, some but, black pessimism. It has some black pessimism part. It has some um, land rights um, situation in there too. So, but because you guys are potentially your SLC, right? So you're going to outside tournaments. It's important that you still understand topicality because there's a lot of kids in, who are going to be competing against you in bottle who are not SLC. So they you know, they don't have to be concerned about topicality the way that you guys do, because you are going to be hitting teams. Not only can you run it, you know, at, at the SLC tournaments, but it will be run against you almost definitely. It's a very common argument. So it's important that you know it, even if you can't use it at the first bottle tournament. Yes, please, if I can, um, I'm going to stop sharing this screen now. But um, we're going to get out of here. I want to um, say thank you again for joining this practice because, again, I know I told you Nairobi, this is, you know, when y'all not here, it, this is a resource for people to watch and for people to use it so that they can be able to have a practice when they're not able to. I got your emails. Let me make sure I got um, Nairobi. Well, I should have Nairobi's email already, right, Nairobi? Um, yeah, I can drop it in the chat. Yeah, yeah drop it in there because I'm going to uh, make sure that we're communicating to get you prepared for the tournament. Um, and also, oh, I'm going to be doing a demo debate here soon about the topic with Amy. We're actually going to be going against each other. So I, you want to see that so that you can have that as a resource so you can figure out what you can use um, within your, 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 you know, see what you can use at, to emulate some good um, examples and also to be like, maybe I don't want to make those mistakes, right? So, because um, we're a little rusty. I lost my last demo debate. Amy yeah, we're, we're probably going to be making mistakes for sure. Yeah, we're probably going to be making mistakes. And all, every, no, first of all, even the people who volunteered was like, you know how long I've been out of debate? So everybody's a little rusty, even I. So, um, but I think it's a good diversity. You'll be seeing other people from the uh, people who are alums from the um, New York Urban Debate League, the Kansas City Urban Debate League, which is also myself, and then um, New York, Kansas City, and, and, and Baltimore Urban Debate League. So there'll be three um, people from alums there. Um, and Amy, who's a volunteer. So you get um, Boodle um, volunteers as well. So you're going to have an array of like groups. Um, um, it'll be two girls, two guys. So it'll be a battle battle of the genders. So that'll be a fun part of it too. And um, when we get it up and running, take notes and stuff, and we'll advise you on that. And then, yeah, we'll keep you up to date with evidence um, and support. And when other other activities coming up, um, I don't know what's going on. Is the run really quick, Amy, before I get off with Nairobi and Gracie, just because I need to make sure I have this information for them. Do you know who's going to the round robin? Is it um, invitation only? Um, I think that they could send somebody else. They were looking to send somebody else, but I don't. I don't know if they ever figured out who that could be. And that, but that's like a wait weekend, list. Though. But that's this weekend, though, isn't it? No, it's not this weekend. It's next weekend. But we oh, need to finalize week. it by like tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. Um, Nairobi, Gracie, last thing, announcements. If you want to attend that tournament just as a practice with the round robin, a lot of these kids probably going to be prepared anyway. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but if you want to go to the round robin to test out your skills, it's like just something to help you get prepared for the year. You're going to be competing nationally with other Urban Debate League students. So outside of having a demo from coaches and people who are alums, you can use that as an opportunity to, to demo yourself for the year. So that's October 1st. Uh, the first round is like at 5 p.m. on Friday or 5.30 or something on, on Friday. So like after school on Friday. And then there's three rounds on October 2nd, which is a Saturday. And then one round October, the Sunday morning, and then break rounds if you break. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, it's the National Urban Debate League's uh, Expo. So uh, Nuriel and Nathaniel are going. Um, just let us know if you want to go. Do you... Uh, if you guys come Monday, do you guys have like Nuriel's contact info? Do you have like a way, do you need my contact info so we can make sure you to get you into the school? Mm -hmm.